Random Fandoms is a podcast featuring interviews across pop culture that don't fall into the comics, cosplay, or convention categories. Think of it as a little something for everyone. For sure. The deal Double G loves me some random fandoms in the LBC. Episode 1 of Random Fandoms, Popcorn HQ staff writer Josh Winchester interviews John McKinnon, the executive director of the Elmhurst Art Museum in Elmhurst, Illinois. They discuss the Marvelosity, the art of Alex Ross exhibit, which is a celebration of comic book artist Alex Ross's career and is on display now until August 20th. Enjoy! Who approached whom about the idea for this comic book superhero exhibit, and what was the inspiration behind it all? Sure. Thanks for, for asking, um, and thanks, for, of course, for, for covering the show. Um, so the museum has a definite family-friendly audience, especially in the summers, and so we intentionally looked for uh, show opportunities for this time slot for the summer of 2023 uh, with that in mind probably a year, year and a half ago. And um, it just so happened that the Alex Ross show that started in um, Libertyville at the Lake Forest uh, Museum, uh, the Dunn Museum, uh, was touring. And we felt like, well, it had been there maybe four years ago, but in, in our terms, maybe that was like a decade ago because of COVID, or, and we have a different audience than them. So uh, that was one thing that we did pause on because it had been in the Chicago area before. Uh, but we knew that um, there were a couple of things on our side, uh, and we were excited to present it. So we did approach them at the Dunn Museum to ask if the, that was a possibility on their national tour of the exhibition. When you were getting the ball rolling, how did things progress working with Alex to develop the exhibition in terms of what pieces were chosen for display? Because his back catalog, he's been in the business for over 30 years, so it's a lot of work to cherry pick for an exhibit like this. Sure, yeah. And so I think that there's probably a sequence of things that came before us uh, getting the show, including Alex working with Chip Kidd and a number of other people on the book, Marvelocity. And uh, at the same time, I understand they were developing it into an exhibition that was the original exhibition that was at the Dunn Museum. So I wasn't part of all of those, nor was any other museum uh, employee here part of that plan. I wish I could uh, relay more of that, um, but I know that they took pieces and parts from that original show and made it into a traveling show that's that's gone you know around uh, the country, and uh, we were very happy to present uh, what was offered as as that possibility and then add to it right. So we had um, local artists, um, many of which are already in house art talent here, create things like the superheroes in Wilder Park. Um, which is a kind of life-size figures, sometimes worked with youth groups, community youth groups, and we had some other things with our programming and other things that we were able to add to it, and we just felt like it was such a strong center of which you know we could have a rotating cast of other things around, and um, it just felt like a, a great way to make a kind of superhero summer. I absolutely love that superhero summer, and summertime pre- and post-COVID has always been one of the ideal moments when superhero movies get released, as the public well knows. So now, obviously, there was a lot of working with Alex and Chip Kidd on this and everybody else that was involved to an extent prior, but did you guys have to do a lot of back and forth with Marvel Entertainment and Disney because they are the owners of the Marvel Comics characters? Right, yeah, and and I think I was surprised by that uh, as well because I thought, oh, there's going to be many, many restrictions and there's going to be a lot of red tape here. But it was, had already been worked through uh, before the, the touring show. Uh, and, of course, there were select images that we could and couldn't use. Um, and, you know, I think part of that was done through Alex's freelance uh, contract with them, as well as an agreement when the book was created and when that first 
uh, show was created. So again, I was part of those things, but yeah, we're very, very thrilled that all those rights and, and reproduction issues had been uh, taken care of. You talked about being involved with the local community. What are some other you know projects or works that tied around this specific exhibit that you've uh, done for the summer just to engage everyone here in the area? Yeah, it's a good question. So there are multiple things, uh, whether it was the Superheroes in Wilder Park, uh, which we opened up during Art in Wilder Park, a big arts festival that we have uh, that brings in 10,000 people in one weekend. Um, and, you know, kids had a, had a big um, scavenger hunt and other things to, to do, do that. We also worked with the League of Enchantment, which is a, a kind of cosplay group that then uh, volunteers their time to go to lots of local charities. Uh, so they uh, worked with us in, in multiple events. And, of course, all the funds that we gave them for their time went to their charities, whether it's a children's hospital or something else. Um, so that was a great way f- for us to give back through them. And um, there's also another component called an everyday hero where people in the community have been nominating everyday heroes, submitting images, mm-hmm. submitting stories, and a local artist and, uh, and designer has then been rendering them into superheroes uh, to tell their story. Now, as the executive director of the museum, what are your thoughts on comic book art being seen in a new light as something more along the lines of high art? You know, your Picasso, your Renoir, your Monet, even your Andy Warhol, or the sort of thing that could be exhibited in museums for non-comic book fans to enjoy. I think when we saw this possibility of a show, one of the first things that we were very excited about with the tie-in was that our drawing and cartooning classes have always been very popular. And so there was a definite immediate interest in like doing something with our education classes and having uh, different workshops. And in fact, we've had some uh, costumed figure drawing workshops that kind of take a page from Alex Ross's work where people are dressed up in costume and then other people have, have rendered it. And you know, I think we were very interested in that kind of classical training that Alex Ross has of really getting down to the figure, getting it right, uh, getting all the fine details uh, that he does so well down on a page and doing it by hand. So that was kind of something that we explored more through some of these workshops as well as you know some other things that we have. But uh, yeah, I think that that's something that everyone takes away from the show as well is that um, I know that Alex is, is a fan favorite because of this and, and his deep respect and, and um, deep reverence for the characters and stories. But um, I think that's one thing that shines through, that if we had shown another graphic artist, it might have been a different story. But here, that's the kind of way that we've been able to show his work in particular. But otherwise, I think that in very general terms, it's you know exploring the art of comics, just like we would explore, I don't know, the the design aspects of some rock and roll posters, or you know maybe something else that's that's part of pop culture, but requires very art school training. Final question. Now you talked about what people take away from this, but is as the museum director any particular message or motivation you hope museum goers will take away from this exhibit? And you know, following that. Do you see this as opening a doorway for future displays, either with Alex Ross or other local comic book professionals, or even trying to do other stuff with other nationally known individuals in that industry? The most immediate thing that everyone seems to take away from the show, and and it's even from when we explained it way back when, when we were going to propose the show, and I started talking about it with some committees and other, other folks in the community, was that fact that it's done by hand and it's a laborious process that Alex Ross has. It's not just something very quick on the computer because I think, you know, people don't understand that at a first glance. And so just the work behind it gave it a different respect, I think, from individuals, not just see, oh, I see that it's Wolverine. I see this is the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man. I know these characters, but understanding how someone like Alex can make it seem so lifelike and seem like it's going to jump off the page has been something that I think everyone has a better respect for after seeing the show. And in terms of opening the door to other things, you know, I think that we'd welcome it. Like I said, our drawing and cartooning classes have always been popular, even before this exhibition. Uh, We were able to work with some 
artists that work in a kind of comic book genre and other people that work with the figure in different ways with the superheroes in Wilder Park. And I think that, you know, maybe that opens the door for us to, uh, to find other, other fits, uh, whether it's with those same artists or it's, you know, an, another kind of genre of sorts. Big thanks to John McKinnon for taking the time to speak with Pop Code HQ. For more information on the Marvelocity, the Art of Alex Ross exhibit at the Elmhurst Art Museum, you can visit elmhurstartmuseum.org. Elmhurst is E L M H U R S T Art Museum. The exhibit will be on display until August 20th. For more on Alex Ross, be sure to check alexrossart.com.